Welcome to Haxby Shed. It's time to work on this Harrison Mill table nut. Now as usual, one job turns into four jobs. I'll tell you what they are. So first up, whilst we've got this all apart, I want to fix a coolant leak, which is on the end of the gearbox here, kind of here. And uh, the coolant runs along the table, through a hole, and goes across this joint where the gearbox goes onto the end of the table. There might be a gasket in there, I don't know, but in any case, this gearbox needs to come off away from the end of the table, and I just want to fix that leak because as I'm using it, it's just drip, drip, drip on the floor. I'll probably slip one day. It's just annoying. We'll get that done. Here's the next little problem. The whole of this area has had a bash at some point. That's not the original handle, and there should be a lock nut there on the end of the lead screw. Well, the end of the lead screw is missing, probably half an inch plus has gone. So I could build it up with weld and re-thread it. I could weld a piece on and thread it. Uh, another option is if I disengage this hand wheel here, it disengages about there. So I could in fact take a little bit off this sleeve here and that would help a bit. But one way or another, I need to find a way to be able to fit one of these lock nuts here. I could in fact reduce the end of this a little bit so that it goes into the hole around that thread. Um, so there's various ways to gain a bit of extra length on it but we've got to figure that out. I don't really know what that lock nut does. It does say in the manual don't disturb it. I think it's something to do with end floats but possibly on the original design without the table motor on the end because it doesn't seem to be necessary but even so I would like to put it right. The third issue is that the lead screw is bent, so that needs straightening. And then the fourth issue is the nut itself. So this is a universal machine, which means that you can have the lead screw turning without the table moving, or in the normal mode, a peg drops into the side of the nut assembly and the lead screw moves and the table moves. So that's achieved by having this kind of fancy setup here. So cross section, obviously, nut in the center there, in a kind of cage with two bearings, one at each end there. Now I know that, I think it's this side, this bearing's completely shot, I know that, uh, because I found that out when I took this apart just to do the basic degreasing, but my plan was always use the machine, figure out what needs to be done and then work on it, you know, and repair it. So this is the last big item to be done on this machine. So we'll get this apart and see what we find. Here's a shot of the lead screw as it comes into the gearbox and we've got this collar and that collar has two roll pins so I'm going to knock out the one at this side and then I'll take the lid off the gearbox, take about three screws out and the whole gearbox assembly should then come away. Well the pin's out enough, I don't want to take that pin all the way out because I guarantee it would be an absolute sod to get back in. But this is tight against this. So I think um, I've tried the easy things, that's not working. So I'm probably going to put a block of wood on here, get a pry bar and just try and force this off the end. Actually, maybe the other way around. Um, no, hang on. Let me think about that. No, I can do that, I think, because then the whole table should just move across towards me uh, on its ways. I think that's working. Yes, that is working. Right. Yeah, that's done it. This and this are now separate. So this gearbox should come off. Here's a tip. Don't over tighten these screws because they will pull through the lid. Well, that was the condition it was in when I got it and all the bits were in the bottom of the gearbox. Probably had been for years, didn't seem to do any damage but not the point really is it? Come on. Now I made a gasket for this. There's very little oil gets thrown up, in fact probably none actually. So a simple gasket is good enough. So there's the three screws, I think, that hold this onto the end of the table. 
Well, as you might expect, these are pretty tight. There's a dowel in the body by the look of it. Just about there. But just these three hold this whole box assembly onto the end of the table. You just get in, the shaft's in the way a little bit here. But it looks like you can just about get in with a key. Yep. Yeah. Imperial keys, obviously. Right, all three screws were the same length. Let's see if I can balance it on here. No, it doesn't want to come. Oh, heck. Well, when I say a dowel pin, I'm now wondering if it's a roll pin. Well, it's a hollow pin. Ah, now then. Yes, okay. It is a dowel pin. Now I've got a couple of the screws in, so it won't fall off, hopefully. It might swing. Let's have a look. Haha. <laughs> oh, I don't know what. Yeah, it's, no, it's just that one dowel there that was retaining it. By the look of it. Try and balance it on this table if I can. Oh, gosh, that's heavy. No disaster anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, there is no gasket on the end here, so how is that supposed to seal? Hmm. Do you know, I've spent ages looking for a screw from that gearbox lid, and I saw myself, I watched the video back again, putting the screws in here. Well, there it is, look. I must have spent 15 minutes or more looking for that. You know, that gearbox assembly must provide the thrust bearing for the lead screw on this table, because look now. So we'll get this wheel assembly off. Stand still, will you? That's it. Oh, just a minute. I adjusted this when I stripped it down for servicing because this collar here was so tight the whole assembly here was binding up. Now whether I did the right thing I don't know. I'll check it properly when it goes back together. This is just a blank spacer. That's where you would put the gear to drive a rotary table or a differential dividing head. And this assembly comes off as one. I was a bit worried the first time I took it apart that it would all kind of ping apart, but it doesn't. It's just one unit. And there's a key to come out here. And then this, when I unscrew it here, should come straight off. So all four of these screws are the same length. There we are. Oh, it looks nice. thin at this end isn't it? It's quite delicate. Definite bit of backlash on that. We need to pull this out to disengage the peg that goes into the nut unit to allow it to come out and even with it pulled like this I think you still have to pull it a bit more like that from memory. 
and then I think it's just these two, that one and the one at the other side, and then this whole unit comes out. This screw's got a tight spot on it, of course. Here it comes. Now oh, this one's longer, I remember now. This side's longer than the left-hand side over here. And I think it's to do with this assembly. So we'll pull this out and we can withdraw that lead screw completely now. There we are. More evidence of an accident. Can you see that face there, look? And because the part I'm going to show you now is broken off. Now it's not going to matter, luckily. Wait for that to focus. Come on, there you go. It's not going to matter because that part's not even threaded. And this screw's plenty long enough, but yeah, something's happened. Right, well that's the cartridge as I call it. And I think these three screws hold this plate onto this body here. So I'm not going to touch those because I know there's a securing ring at the back here. And there's a little very small grub screw there. Take that out and I know that ring unscrews and then the unit comes out from inside of this body. All this stuff is very soft. The metal, I mean. It's easy to, uh, you know, dent it when you're trying to knock it round. Okay, well the nut itself is bronze in this carrier. There's a cup that holds this bearing, the one on the right side, nearest you. So there's the bearing. Now these bearings are XXLJ25, which the modern equivalent is uh, 6005s, I believe. I'll have to check that, but I think that is what they are from memory. Well, it's right hand thread that makes it a bit easier if I need to cut another which I presume I will do. Well none of these screws are very tight. Three the same size. Oh just an end plate. I can see the bearing though. So there's the bearing. Oh my goodness that bearing. So the bearings just in there. It's got so much free play on it. Now I look at this bearing here. I'd said 6005, but actually it says Ransom, Hoffman and Pollard thrust 7005. So I'm beginning to wonder if the design hadn't changed slightly, but when you look at this one, look how much movement there is on that. But I need to get this one off because you can't, there's no um, detail on this side. Now this, with the two holes in, you know, is this some kind of adjusting collar? It looks at the moment to be all part of the same piece. This and this together. Now when I look at this and this, the assemblies seem pretty similar. So I'm thinking maybe this one is driven just with two pegs like this one was. So I need to give this a knock and see if I can just get it away from this. Now this one is longer because it goes through this plate. So be my witness. <laughs> that one goes in there. This one's shorter and it's just the cup that drops onto that one. This is getting more complicated. As I try to separate this from this, actually, this nut is splined and then the nut is coming out, the bronze nut, is coming out with this assembly here. The other thing I've noticed is these pins, look, are quite loose. You could easily lose one of those when you're working on it, is what I mean. Anyway, we carry on. I need to get this separated. Well, it's got the same driving pins at this side, but what I now know is, look, 
not all the way along but if I had to make one of these it would be a so-and-so wouldn't it I don't know if that's the same part as that yet but there's another one of those sort of collars here look with the two holes in and I wonder if that's not part of a backlash adjustment hmm but then if it was something would have to be in two parts wouldn't it hmm well there's the nut separated it was just pressed into this hmm I was hoping this would be in two parts somehow so that these adjusting rings if they were you know would take out the backlash but it's not looking like that is it well I've got it all laid out so I can take a picture of this so I can see how it all goes back together this looks like a complicated piece to make I don't suppose I'll be able to buy one of those and if I did I'm sure it would be very expensive I've still got to check out the thread on the lead screw see how much that's worn it doesn't look too bad and I need to check how bent it is maybe I'll do that next needs a bit of thought this well looking up 7005's um, they should be used in pairs they are for thrust and the thrust should be applied from the side that does not have the markings so if that's correct the thrust would be coming from this side and the markings would be on the outside now this one has markings on the outside and this one doesn't and this is the one with all the play in it so methinks that could have been a problem that one seems to be on the right way that one's the wrong way around maybe I'm just learning about this okay but that's my first impression anyway well let's see what this lead screws like I don't think it's too far out actually I'm not quite sure where it's bent I'm gonna guess it would be here but I think we can sort that out but I need to check these threads as well now there are five millimeter pitch but I suspect they're not standard metric 5mm Acme I think it'll be um, Imperial probably cut with a 5 TPI Acme tool which is almost the same as 5mm pitch well that's got it apart that's the easy bit done I knew this was going to be a difficult job that's why I've been putting it off so long I'll need to uh, take this away this nut away do some homework figure out if I can make one but it'll have to go back together um, because I'll need the machine to make it I can bore out the center you know cut the thread on the lathe but then I've got to cut these serrations somehow and for that I need a dividing head which is in hand so we'll come back to this